Hi, I'm Mark. Welcome back to Foothill Paint and Fabrication. Well, today I got my buddy Dave back over here. He's been uh, gracious enough to come over and give me a hand on some of these projects. We're going to be hanging the door uh, on the passenger side of the cab today, and uh, it's better to do this job with two people. I've done it by myself on a freshly painted car by myself, uh, but it's just too nerve-wracking where you're going to scratch or chip the paint. So he's come over to give me a hand, and we're going to get the door hung. We're just going to go over some highlights of uh, what to look for while you're doing it. And then uh, what just be mindful of, and then, uh, and then hopefully this thing will go smoothly and we'll get it lined up pretty nice. It's got brand new weather stripping on it, so it's not going to want to close well. Uh, but it is, you, know, you guys know it takes time for that stuff to work its way in. So let's just jump right in here and uh, get at it. Okay, to start off, um, I chased all the threads uh, with a tap just to make sure they're good and clean. And then uh, the owner got stainless steel hardware to re uh, replace the old one. So I put a little dab of anti-seize anti down inside all the threads. So uh, just in case, because you will be backing these bolts off, uh, tighten them and loosen them a bunch of times to get these doors adjusted. So you don't want the stainless or even steel to gall inside there. So uh, do yourself a favor, either a little bit of white grease or something or any C's, it'll, it'll save you, you know, down the line. So now that I've got them, uh, the holes ready to go, some of these hinges sometimes they're a little hard to get in there. And so you kind of have to just be careful when you're putting it down inside the hole. And then you may have to bump it a little bit if you got a lot of paint, you know, around the edges. Uh, luckily, you know, the flange will cover that up. So uh, I'm going to pull you in tight right here and we're just going to zip right through this real quick getting these hinges on and the way we're going to do it i'm going to get them in and then i'm just going to raise them up the holes are slotted so i'm going to just kind of snug up the bolts till the the hinge is about in the center just a good starting point and we're just going to snug them up a little bit because then we're going to slide the door on and hang them so we want both hinges at the same equal distance so they fit on the slots on the uh, door nicely so i'm going to bust this out real quick and then uh, we'll move over and uh, get this door hung Okay, the bottom hinge goes in really easy. I've already got it in. Um, I just got the, the bolts finger tight. The top hinge is a tight squeeze. Now, this has, these have been rebuilt by the owner, so they're really stiff, but the springs stick out a little bit, so it has to make it past this part and the spring to get in there, and it needs to be in the full open position to get it back inside here. So you just kind of have to squeeze it up inside there and then just raise it up and down a little bit till you find the widest spot get in the way of the camera here and then you just kind of have to bump it in there because they are a tight fit so I just had to you know kind of force it in there a little bit and if you hang on to it and uh, you're careful it's uh, it's not that big a deal but chances are you've got a lot of paint on your new hinge or your hinge and then you've got a lot of paint around the opening and it, uh, it just adds a few more mills on there and it makes it hard to get back in. But if you have it in the full open position and uh, get it up close, and then just bump it with your hand, it'll go in. Okay, so we got these ready to go. I'm gonna get the camera back a little bit or try to find a good angle to show you guys. And then uh, Dave and I are gonna get, these, uh, get the door hung on here. Now I got these finger tight. Uh, you do not want to leave these bolts sticking out uh, because when the door closes, now there's a recess in the door to accept these bolts, bolt heads. But if you leave them out thinking, well, I'll just tighten one or, and then leave the other two loose, they're sticking out too far when you go to test fit and close the door, that bolt head is going to hit that, uh, hit that uh, door jam and it's going to ruin the paint. So uh, keep in mind, keep those down, run down. Uh, finger tight at least and then you'll be safe and you won't have to worry about trying to touch up the paint on the inside of the door there so let me swing the camera around and uh, we'll get this door hung okay uh, we're gonna go ahead and get the door hung now we've got uh, a stool right down here it's got a towel on it and a actually two by six to get it the right height so we can actually just rest that on there and it works out pretty good so you don't have to try to hold the weight of the door 
and you can slide it in and out. And then when you're readjusting, you can still have that underneath there to help you, uh, you know, get the bolts in there and get it lined up. So we're just going to go ahead and get this on here. I've got a drift right here. I've got all the bolts. I've got the ratchet. Everything's ready to go. So, all right, let's uh, get that balanced on there. And we're just going to come in slow. Hold on, let me put my glasses on so I can see what's going on here. Okay. Just going to guide that right down inside there. tight squeeze in here. The sheet metal holds it up a little bit. Uh, push that, that. There we go. You got to really bump these in because these hinges slide into pockets. If you bump it with your hand, it's a lot better than just shoving on it because if it slides in too far, you're going to hit something and screw up the paint. So once it gets close and the holes start to get close, I'll just put the drift in here and pull the hole straight, right there. Okay, that, that was about the easiest part of the whole deal. Okay, got all the screws in, or the bolts in, excuse me, and uh, they're run in just, just snug. They're not gonna move. So now we're gonna pull the stool out and then we're just gonna close it really slowly and just watch all the everywhere just to make sure it's not gonna bind up. Okay, with two people, it's a lot better because somebody can watch where it's coming together at the cowling and then I can watch back here. We got a piece of paper folded up and so uh, with this dark uh, color with dark um, weather stripping it's hard to see how big the gap is so you can just simply slide it in there and make sure it's still clearing looking good here I got pretty close right off the bat that's that's pretty good all right so we'll take uh, the cowling bolts so we need to go up uh, the body lines aren't lining up um, so the hinge the hinges into the the post here uh, they've got slots in it so we're just going to go straight up with those we're going to put that stool back under right there. It's got like a little gas shock in that stool, so it's really uh, puts a little pressure on it. And I'll loosen, there's three bolts on each hinge. I'll loosen two. And then when we're ready to go, like, I'll loosen the other one. You want to make sure you back them off enough so you don't gouge the paint when you're sliding this thing up and down. We just need to lift up. Ready? That was pretty good right there. Hold it right there. Okay, that's about as far as it wants to go. Now I'm not tightening all the bolts. I'm just tightening one to hold it in place. But I run the other ones in so they don't end up uh, jamming into the door. We don't have to worry about that. So it went up pretty far. So let's see how it did. up. My body line's way off here, so we need to go way up that way. Okay, as you guys can see, our body lines aren't lining up, uh, but it's the, the line here is actually pretty parallel. So we need to try to go up, straight up, instead of just lifting this up, because our gap along here, it could go up a little bit and pull that forward, which we will do, but we kind of still need to go up uh, in a nice parallel motion. So I think we'll raise it up first, to get this line a little more uh, tighter, and then we'll try to get the whole thing up at once. All right, now let's get these right here. Get that. Okay, and I'll put my finger in here so I can feel how much it's moving. All right, go ahead and lift. Doesn't want to move. Anything? No, doesn't want to move. Okay, go ahead and try to lower the back and then push forward again. Pull down and then shove it. Maybe it's jammed up. Okay, so now we're just going to close the door. I'm going to loosen the bolts, and Dave's going to try to lift up with it in the closed position to see if we can uh, get it to rise up where we want it. Any 
better? How's that body line looking? Okay, we actually had to pull the door off and this hole right here was stopping us from coming in as far as we wanted. So I took the burr tool and the die grinder and I opened them up a little bit on the top and a little bit that way. Now, ideally this should have been done before the truck came apart. The owner did adjust everything. He said he liked the way it looked, but, and I'm sure it's fine, but for us, uh, we're a little bit more particular. So we're trying to get this door to slide in more and uh, make the gap at the back better and then also get the door up so the body lines line up better. So I uh, just had to pull it off and we'll have to kind of start over. These hinges are not gonna move. We've got them up as high as they can go and adjusted the best they're gonna be. So they're gonna stay. So now we're just gonna slide the door right back on and hopefully we'll be able to uh, get it uh, perfect. Okay guys, it's, uh, it's the next day. Uh, yesterday didn't go so well. We, we hung the driver door, no problem, got it adjusted. It looks, you know, pretty good. Uh, not as good as I'd like because these body lines do not line up. Um, you can get the, the, this one to line up, but then that one doesn't line up. And that's just a, a structure of how it was stamped and put together in 1950. They didn't really care that much. So when the owner was taking this truck apart, I asked him, align the doors the, so you're happy, so I know when I paint it, they're going to be okay. Well, the problem with that is... Um, I'm sure he'd be fine. I could put this door on and he'd be just happy, but I'm not happy. And that's the problem. And this is a 100% on me, has nothing to do with uh, the owner. Uh, I'm just more particular. So what I should have done was hang the doors with the rebuilt hinges, do all the hard work to make sure they would get where I wanted them before it's in paint. I know better, but uh, I figured I'm just gonna paint these parts. He's gonna put it together, fine. Well. I should have known better. So now I'm at the point where I'm having to, you know, mess around with it after it's painted. So this is all on me. You know, I've been doing this a long time. I should have known better. Now it's not like we have to repaint anything, uh, but I had to do some work and I'll, I'll come, I'll bring you in close just in case you guys run into the same problem with yours, hopefully before you even get into prime and uh, I'll show you how I addressed it. Okay. So the problem was, the door needed to come up and on these doors as you guys know the adjustment for up is on the cow post here so uh, it wouldn't go this hinge wouldn't go any higher and the reason it won't go any higher is because the hinge uh, had still had adjustment in the slots but it was hitting right here where that recess is so and, and you know it, this is a game of sixteenths of an inch when you're trying to get these adjusted properly so what I had to do was the, uh, the sheet metal, so the way these are structured, uh, this is the hinge, this is just a beauty cover, basically, and it just kind of covers up everything so you can, you know, it looks nicer. So uh, the problem was this piece of sheet metal was sticking up higher than it should be, and when it was spot welded on, or whatever, and so originally it had, it got bent out because it was lifted up and then crushed in there to, and it was basically crushing over the top of that. So what I did was I took the die grinder and I just ground that back a little bit so it'll fit into this recess and fit fine. Now, if I'd have done this, and this is me showing you guys, you know, I make mistakes too, this kind of stuff happens. Um, ideally, uh, if I would have run into this, I could have cut all the spot welds and I could have got this drop down and re-spot weld it on. So, um, you know, that's on me right there. And then when it goes in now, if I can get it in from this side. Now these fit in here snug anyways. So, so now I can get it to the full allotment of slot and we should be able to get this door high enough so it can, um, we can get these body lines lined up right and then we won't have to fight it near as much as we were. So uh, that's on me. I should have done this before it was painted, before it was in prime, before I did body work, I should have done all this. But uh, we kind of, the owner and I had an agreement where I would just paint the parts, he'd put it back together. Um, but you know, this is just one of those things. So um, I've got it fixed. Uh, I'm gonna call my buddy Dave, he's gonna come back over and um, we'll try to get this door hung. 
Okay, we got the door hung. Uh, Dave came over. It only took minutes uh, to get this adjusted right after I made all the adjustments to the hinges that uh, to allow them to go to the max adjustment. So the ones on the eight pillar post or the cow post here, they are all the way up now, the max amount on the slots. And uh, just bending that sheet metal away and trimming it a little bit, uh, it allowed both hinges to go all the way up. And then also where the hinge sticks out, where the door slides over it, uh, those holes, I took a burr tool and I opened those up to the top uh, so we could get, you know, the door, actually lift the door onto those arms and get those, that, that much higher. So now uh, it's adjusted. It's as good as it's going to get. The body lines aren't perfect, but uh, you guys have these trucks. You know, this body line lines up, but this one doesn't, you know. So uh, it's just the build quality of these trucks from 1950. Now, I should have done all this, you know, when the truck came, came to me, the cab with the doors off, uh, and I should have done it then, frankly. Uh, you know, I screwed up. Uh, but, you know, it's one of those things. I had the owner uh, adjust the doors before it tore it apart, and he, he was happy the way it looked. But, uh, you know, his happy and my happy. I'm sure he'd be thrilled if I would have just stuck them on there and bolted them up uh, as good as he got them. But uh, I wanted it that much better. You know, we went to all this work. And uh, I should have done it in the right steps, uh, but I didn't, and I screwed up. And, you know, luckily there's no harm, no foul. I was able to make all the adjustments. Uh, none of what I did shows, uh, you know, it's deep down inside the door or inside the cowl here. So, uh, but don't do what I did. Make sure you get it done before you even get to the paint, uh, paint uh, stage. So we got them all adjusted. So let me bring you around just a couple little uh, tricks that uh, will help you and keep you from scratching your paint when you're putting, you know, get, doing your final adjustments. And a little uh, trick that Dave just taught me uh, to help these new, brand new weather strips actually uh, sink in there a lot better and uh, when you're closing the door, they don't get wrinkled up. Okay, the first quick little uh, trick, and I've been doing this for years. I've done, I do a lot of A-body cars and uh, GM A-body cars the way the hinges are designed, when this comes around, it, get, it, it wants to get real close and then it just pulls away at the last minute. So it's a little scary. So you can't tell what, you know, and obviously you don't want to, you know, move the door until you feel paint hitting paint. So what I do is I just take some paper and this is folded up and I'll stick this inside there. And then when I'm closing, you know, I just jiggle it back and forth like a feeler gauge. It's not going to scratch the paint. And then you can just kind of slide it up inside there like a feeler gauge and tell, you know, and then you just keep moving it as you close and you know if it's about to hit. Now, if, the, if, if it jams up the paper, then you know you're too tight because, you know, if it's close enough for a folded over paper, uh, you know you've got your gap a little too tight because body flex, uh, you know, uh, sag, anything, you don't want it to be that tight. So, so on the front here, when you're getting your door first hung and you're coming in close and you, you, you're not pushing it all the way close yet, you can tell that one's good. Let me pull you around and I'll show you the other danger spot on these. Okay, so the other spot when you're first hanging the door is right here and right where it comes to the post right here. So, you know, if the door's sagged a little bit, this part right here is going to hit right here. So, you know, you're watching the top, you're watching everywhere else, you make sure none of this is going to hit, and then you ram this into the inside of the door jam. So I just use the paper once again, and I lay it in there, and while the door's being closed slowly, I just keep working it back and forth to make sure that it's not hitting. And then to, to gauge how thick it is, or what my gap is, then I just keep folding the paper up and putting it in there and then until it jams. And so, you know, we've got a pretty good gap in there now so I can fold it over multiple times and it still doesn't hit. So that means when this door is gonna sag a little bit over time, that's not gonna start banging into that. So it's just a little thing I've been doing for years. You know, I do a lot of this by myself. And if you're trying to look down, this is a dark blue and you're trying to look in there to see if it's gonna rub, uh, you know, by the time you figure out that it rubbed, you, you've already rubbed your paint, you know, so you had the, the paper in there and it, uh, it really helps, helps me. Um, and so it keeps me from scratching paint or chipping or doing something crazy. So uh, that's the other thing I like to do. Let me show you the tip that Dave just taught me. Okay, so uh, these are obviously brand new weather strips and they're, you know, they haven't been squished in and, you know, all like that. But one of the biggest problems is 
when you're closing the door on fresh paint, uh, they tend to bind a little bit. So it doesn't hit and slide and seal. It tends to curl up and roll up on you and then ball up. And that can be a problem later on because once they get a little hard, they're not sealing like they're supposed to. And then you've wrinkled them up and then, you know, it sits out in the sun and then they just stay like that. So uh, Dave told me, uh, use some cornstarch. Don't use silicone. Don't use WD-40, any of that stuff. Use some uh, cornstarch. I got it on a microfiber towel and uh, it's a little messy, but it wipes right off. And you just cornstarch these things. And what it does is. It, it's really slick. You guys know how cornstarch feels. So when that rubber hits that fresh paint, then it just uh, it just slides right in. And I'll tell you what, when we first shut these doors, I mean, they'd close about like this. And then I'd have to really push hard on it. As soon as I wiped this cornstarch on there, it went almost all the way to latch. You know, now there's a lot of compression going on right here on the front. So I made sure I cornstarched that extra. And I'm going to put a little bit more on there. Uh, so when the latches go on and I latch the door shut, the, I know those uh, weather strippings are going to be laying like they're supposed to, and they're not going to get all wrinkled up or pulled or pull against your weather strip adhesive, right? So uh, it's just a little tip, and thanks to Dave, uh, you know he's been he's done a lot of car stuff too over his life, and uh, that's a great tip for you guys, and uh, I'm happy to learn it today from him. So um, try it out. It's uh, way better than putting any kind of oils or anything on there because, uh, you know, oils are going to attract dirt. And then if you use silicone, there's no silicone in the shop. You shouldn't have silicone anywhere where you're painting. So um, I prefer to use other things, and, uh, and this, is, this is a great tip. So I'm going to be using it from now on. Okay, guys, that just about wraps up this video. It was a little uh, frustrating for me, uh, mainly because I screwed up. But uh, I certainly don't want to hide anything from you guys. If I screw up, I don't want to edit that out or anything. I want to make sure you see, you know, what I did wrong and uh, how I fixed it. So in this case, I should have just done all this work back when, you know, before they were even in prime. But I didn't. Luckily, there's no harm, no foul. I was able to, you know, make the adjustments and, you know, modify some stuff and, uh, and get the doors on nice. Now, they look good. Uh, not great. This body line lines up real nice on top, but the one on bottom doesn't. If you got you own one of these trucks, you know you're not going to get those lined up unless you start splitting sheet metal and doing a bunch of other metal work. Uh, certainly, that's not what we're going to be doing on this truck. So, but all in all, looks good. Our gaps all the way around look great on um, both doors. Basically, both doors look uh, identical. Well, that's uh, the driver's side's slightly better, but this side looks really nice too. So, I'm really happy to get these on, and we're going to be moving on to getting the door latches in and uh, some of the other mechanisms for the owner. And then this whole thing's going right back to the owner and he can start putting it back together, uh, you know, for all the parts he's got. So thanks for joining me here at Foothill Paint Fabrication. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button if you haven't already and mash that bell icon so you get notifications every time I release a new video. We'll see you on the next one.